Oh, 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 welcome to that Friday feeling. Yes, I am Chris, and you're back in the place of Dad's RC Hangar on this wonderful Friday feeling. Oh, yeah. What are we going to be doing, kids, today? We are going to be looking at the Spitfire custom exhaust within the Western UK. Oh, yeah. Sexy. Oh yeah. Look at this. Look at this. In fact, I don't even know where I should be standing. Look at this. Right. Now I know all of you are gonna get Chris. Can we not hear it? Can we not fire it up? I want to hear this as much as you do. I'll show you the engine in a minute, and it's not as simple as to take out and stick it on a stand. So we're gonna stick a um, for next week, next Friday. We're gonna stick a, a um, stuff. <laughs> we're going to stick stuff in here. We are. We're going to stick stuff in here. And to enough to uh, fire up the engine. So I want to hear a roar. Hopefully roar. But anyway, enough about that. Let's have a look here. So this is uh, Alan's rendition of the Spitfire with the three exhausts. It is a Mark V, so it only has three. Normally in the Mark V, you'd have like, uh, you know, cones coming out the side. I mean, they could still be added, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy of how they've come out. Um, we'll show you the actual engine. We've got a lovely spinner now. Um, obviously, as you know, well, as you might know, the Mark V Spitfire had three blades, I believe, and it didn't have a silver spinner. But we're running a two blade, um, yeah, at the moment anyway. It can always be changed. And I just love the look at the spinner. I think it deserves something sexy. So as you can see, um, what Alan's done, if I can get it in focus, he's cut along the edge here, and he's got a screw on the side, one, two, and three. Um, and then there's a screw uh, at the back here. Now I'll show you when I take off the screws how he's done it. Now there is some air holes, L holes. So there's one at the front that air in and two at the back air out. So now we can put a grill across there, but it's a good place to get to your glow plug or if you want to change it and stuff. I mean, we're going to have this as a automatic, a bit like the Tiger Moth. So, you know, we'll see. But I, I, let's, let's get this. I'll tell you what, while I unscrew this, because, you know, this is... Um, where are you? Hang on, this just uh, can I see me? Can you see me? Should I just move you around a bit? There you go. Hello, hello. How you doing? <laughs> I'll tell you what, before we do anything else, I've got to show you something. Alan said to me, I bought loads of glue. Alan said to me, stick the glue in the fridge. My wife said no. So I bought myself a mini fridge. <laughs> oh yeah. It even has a couple of beers if you want to, but yeah. So we can stick my glues in there. Anyway, before, while I take the screws off, um, and to get you a bit more excited, um, let's see what happened last Sunday uh, with Alan at uh, Western UK. And uh, I'll see you in a mojo. Who's Joe? Hi, welcome back. And we are once again back at Western UK in sunny, sunny, not so sunny Kent. <laughs> yes, we're back. It's actually a Sunday. Um, if you do follow all the bits and pieces on social media, you'll know that I was coming here Sunday to pick the Spitfire engine up. I am so excited. It just, it feels so great to be here. It's the smell of stuff. It really is. Um, we've got lots of stuff going on today. We're going to have a few tips that Alan's going to tell me about things that I will pass on to you um, when we record the video. I've got the whole week to record the video, so I'm hoping I can record some sort of decent video for you. But the main thing is the Spitfire engine, the custom exhaust that Alan has moulded from his hands. <sighs> so it's similar to the Mark V Spitfire. Now, obviously, um, the, um, the Spitfire, the VQ Spitfire, is a two-blade. Um, the Mark V is actually a three-blade, so... Um, even though he's giving me a spinner and stuff. But let's just take a look at something. Right, we're back at the case, Alan, because uh, I just enjoy looking at all these uh, motors. But you've got something to show us. What, what you got? What you got? Right. A friend of mine who's into boats yep. um, blew up his 26cc petrol engine. As you do. So I built him that, wow. which is a Magnum 180. Right. But... It's converted to marine with the back plate cooler, converted to petrol and using Runtronic ignition. So that is and these are my rubber mounts that we do, which are very, very soft rubber, but because of the design you get very little movement. So but obviously with a steel flywheel mm. you can't put a magnet in it. So 
if you look there's this piece of aluminium is screwed onto it mm -hmm. and then it's got the magnet there and the magnets in there and it does your timing yeah let's have a, let's have a bit more cool this is heavy <laughs> well, that, that's, that's what I get in fact that's a core mount with a bit of rubber in there and there's the magnet as you can see on there with the aluminium plate that's the sort of out of the box ideas you have Alan that I mean I've only known you for a little while but I mean, some of your ideas are fantastic. I mean, it's a shame you don't know how to operate a camera because I don't. <laughs> Bloody thing keeps going in and out of focus. Stop <laughs> it. Uh, look at that. This is heavy. I mean, what's, what's the weight of that? Uh, I don't know. Stick it on the scales. But uh, it's not It's not meant to be light. It's meant to produce... A, and that's going in a boat still, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's got a backplate cooler because, again light with the aero motors if you can keep the crankcase cold volumetric efficiency goes up so what size boat i mean in the sort of feet wise would that be powerful? um this is in a one of my old boats from the 80s yeah. um which is uh, about 38 inches long 38 inches long wow that's a big boat mm. have you but still got it where is it Oh, uh, it, a friend of mine has been making them. He's oh, got, okay. he's got a twelve of mine, a twenty-eight, a forty-six, um, and this thing, all in. It's the same boat, but just gets bigger. Just gets bigger. Yeah. I'll tell you what, because it, it's been fascinating to how you make these things. Can I just grab this engine here? Is that all right? Which one? This one here. I won't walk away with it. What I might do. No, that's the. Um, I might. In fact, let's just, there we go, I thought oh, that was going to be, right, see this back here, and it's not the engine I'm looking at, it's the exhaust, this bit here. Now, Alan makes these, and I'm fascinated to find out how he makes a hole into a round end. I tell you, let's go back in your shop and let's have a little look to see how you do that, is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're back in the shop, as you can see by my terrible lighting, but we'll just try and sort that out, see if we get a bit neutral. There we go, zero percent. And Alan's going to build what we just saw on that motor, which I think's awesome. I didn't realise, well, I did realise, but I couldn't figure out in my little old brain uh, they made the um, ends and stuff. And so, yeah, he's going to make it right here and now. So, uh, yeah, let's let's leave it to Alan and uh, and the lathe, which I think's fantastic. All right, Alan, in your own time, sir. Thought you welded it, but obviously not. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That end is sealed now. That is, uh, and what sort of uh, is that sealed? Sealed like what sort of PSI or does that measured or mm, we don't measure it, but they don't leak. There you go. If it doesn't leak, it's good. So that's one end, and now you're making the exhaust this, the end. This is for pylon racing. So they have to have a set outlet size. So is this by this is by some sort of body to say that if you've got your exhaust, it's got to run by these sort of yeah dimensions, or you um, get yeah banged. It's so that everybody's <laughs> on the same level. Oh, okay.
well. Now I know we're not super, super close to the lathe, but I haven't got that sort of set up with me to get close like that. And then these are the... Can I just show them what you've done so far? So from that tube that we just saw, that's it's quite cold actually. I was expecting it to be really hot. So you sealed one end, and then with the other devices you saw, it's got the size right because obviously it's for uh, racing. And then what? What's the next one you do? And then that is machined by somebody else, not by me. Right. And that is then pushed in there and welded in. So what kind of weld do you use on that? And that's brazing. So a bit of brazing. And what is this made for? You have to use this if you're going to race, high yeah, racing? That, that is for the West 32 for right. um, Club 32 pylon racing. Oh, will you get into focus? Here we go. And there you go. So what's the, what else do you do? You just have to put the hole in? Yeah. We have to machine the flat on the side, then solder that onto the side. Okay. So, we're at so we've now got a mount for screwing it onto the aeroplane. There you go. So. That is, uh, is that brazed again on there? Yeah, brazed on there. And then that becomes the outlet, and then it becomes the exhaust that we just saw. Wow, look at that. Reminds me of that program, how it works. You should be on it, Alan. Well, Alan, so last time we was a bit rushed, um, and we did have some other engines to have a look at, so I thought before we go today, so I can go and play with my aeroplane, what have you got to show us? What you got? Well, this is all stuff I built when I was at EDs. Oh, okay. Um, originally when I first got there he wanted me to build um, a glow out of the um, <clears throat> out of the old hunter crankcase so that's one of them that I did let's have a look at that I'm actually behind the camera because there's not much room look at that that's fascinating and what is this again? that's a three and a half glow based on the hunter crankcase but as you can see there's lumps welded on the side like I used to do with the miles crankcases right so that I can get the ports out here oh. yeah. fascinating there's, one. there's another one but this one had internal ports in there right uh, they all went well uh, but they, again, st they still run or not anymore? Oh yeah, really. But um, all with the um, with the throttled exhaust, right? Because as I said before, with a diesel, if you can keep the temperature up, then the throttle response is so much better. Because normally a diesel, when you throttle it, it cools down. Right. Yeah, you're saying that. I remember you saying that last time. That's fascinating. Mm, that's another silly one I built for a plane. Now, did these go in production or are these just no, like a one no. off? These are just no. but diesel. Yeah. And then that's one I built for a a little plane I built as a radial mount. And just to put a couple of slots up it to make it look a bit more sexy. Yeah, it's just damn sexy. I'm sure people are looking at this who love nitro and diesel and goodness what else are gonna be loving this. So what's that key for at the top again? <laughs> Adjust the compression ratio. Right. Let's see. Oh, I forget. <laughs> that's why we got you here to tell us what they are. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's a bit loose though. I mean, does that vibrate? Can that vibrate to a different? No. Well, that's why that's there to to lock it in position wherever yeah. it is. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. There you go. And that was a twin because I wanted to build a um, another boat. So I just stuck two of them together. Look at that. I stole the gear off of one of them. <laughs> oh, I bet that would make some noise going on in the water, wouldn't it? It went well, yeah. Oh, you did, you did use it? Oh yeah, I used it. Um, because there was a, um, a seven and a half cc class. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Noise effects are for free as usual. Look at that. How the hell, though, would you get these compression rates? i get that back into focus, stupid thing. How, how, that must be a nightmare trying to get them the same. Um, no, you just listen to it. Listen to it and it'll tell you when it's right. You're the engine whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like those. Have you got anything else to show us? What else you got to show us? Well, 
Um, when I work for Colonel H.J. Taplin, Taplin, yeah. Um, I did the uh, <coughs> the Taplin Tempest, which I think I made about fifty of these while I was there. Um, it was a it wasn't a very nice motor because they didn't the guy who was running the workshop wasn't an engine person mm. so when they cast the back plates mm. they cast them with a the sprue this end so they machine the face there very nicely where the carburetor screws in mm. and then parted it off where you've got to get the seal yeah. and my first job there was to try and machine the face of the uh, back plate right. and I tried lots of different ways of doing it and we landed up we had a uh, a guy who only had two fingers on one hand a piece of glass and some wet and dry and he he rubbed them flat which was wow. a shit idea have a look at that yeah. is a look at this yeah. just don't get it a bit closer because yeah. if that's, I get the focus as well it's even better that's yeah. the standard um, Tempest Right, and then that's one I did for myself using this these bits here, a Taplin uh, twin silencers mm. with the ends cut off. Um, Look at that. that made a dramatic difference in performance because that again it turned it into a Schnell ported motor. How fantastic is that? It's still got nice compression as well. That's nice. And um, that one, I think, used um, a composite piston. So it was an alum, um, aluminium piston mm. with um, a steel solid ring, and the piston was screwed together. So that way we made a lighter piston. Um, Let's get you ready to right Talk a bit more then. <laughs> so, I mean, how many did you make of these? Um, of these, mm. I did about 50, um, right. and then I left. That was the only one of them, because I did that for myself. Mm. And went from there, where did you go on to from there then, from that? Uh, from there, I went into uh, motorbikes again, because I'd been into motorbikes, and I went to Hummingbird Motorcycles. Well, we're going to do that, aren't we? We're going to come back again, um, sort of like, uh, after you've probably gone on holiday again. Um, sort of like maybe sit down to have a chat about motorbikes, you know, we never know what we might learn from me from that one. I mean, we've learned so much about engines I have, even though I don't even know what engine's in my Spitfire, but that's okay, because, you know, I'm the guy with all the gear and no idea. Oh, you back! How cool was that? I mean, I mean, Alan's just the man, isn't he? He's just a walking book of awesomeness, of RC-ness. Ness. he's brilliant he's fantastic and how, how he does that i'm going to give that a go we are going to go back there um maybe in a month's time or something uh, to talk about his motor rc motorbikes which is going to be quite interesting and and i'm going to have a go on the lathe yes i am to make an exhaust so let's uh let's um i'll tell you what we'll do let's go for some phone footage on the engine here we go phone footage in action look at this so this is uh this is the uh setup as you can see there's the uh, there's the lovely exhaust i'll show you underneath in a minute and the lovely exhaust there so i'm going to turn around now i didn't get can you believe it i didn't get uh, something to put on well of course you can believe it so anyway this is the uh, west 50 where is me pamphlet 52 t2 that's what it is so here's the magic here's all the magic happens anyway so if i can just move that there that should be fine okay so you now on here is a little couple of tips here actually where you see here i haven't got me pointers it where's my pointy stick here here and uh, here oh, somewhere around here so on here rather than put a gasket as you can see it's missing the nuts off at the moment rather than putting the gasket um alan said it's good to put five minute epoxy on there because of the aluminium stretches and everything it will le leak but five minute epoxy it won't how cool is that so i've got <coughs> excuse me put some five minute epoxy on there so here's the actual exhaust that comes out all hot gases 
This here is kind of like a silicon tube and I've got to put a couple of um, cable ties on there to hold it tight. There's your tube that goes um, back into the uh, bottle, the fuel bottle. And then you've got the two pipes that come down either side of the bottle. So this is obviously your, your quiet box or your baffle box or whatever you like to call it. Now probably there's some real technical name. And then you can't really see it. You can't really see down there, I don't think. Yeah, there you go. And then that goes down, hidden by the wood, into the exhaust. I mean, how cool is that? This is going to sound awesome. There's a little carburetor, of course, and uh, and your little glow plug. But there you go. So there's the other one. It's, they've also got in there, I think, little... If I can just get it in there. Get it in there. Little... Um, joins silicon joins like this and then onto uh, each each engine exhaust so you can see i didn't really want to take it out because it just means it's going to be a right pain in the neck to get out so rather than do that i will um this is good. i will set her up i'll put the bottle in there look at that it's just fantastic really impressed with this he's done a fantastic job i mean the man is just a legend in my book um, yeah, and there we go. I believe that's the fuel intake. So the fuel line goes on there. And yeah, jobs are good. And we'll stick a tank in there, right behind the firewall. There, oh, there you go. Actually, you can actually see the exhaust. They've got them little silicon joiners in there. Um, that are absolutely fine. I mean, it gives the plane a bit more, a bit more uh, rigidity, I guess. I don't know, or flexibility. All these ability words are just getting. Yeah, um, me and phones and cameras just don't want to mix, do they? There you go. I mean, look, come on. That is sexy, do you not believe it? Okay, it's only a two-stroke engine. But that's big enough. It's a West engine, so it's a 52T2. It's going to be powerful. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, this is just a fantastic build engine. I mean, it's, you know, it's a VQ uh, model. It's a big scale. And, yes, we could have probably put um, a four-stroke in there. But I don't think there'd been left a lot of room for the exhaust system that I wanted to have in there. So a bigger model is needed, I think. A bigger Spitfire. Um, and in Alan's shop, there is a bigger Spitfire. <laughs> yes, I might be buying a bigger Spitfire. It's already built and painted. Um, we'll see about that one, shall we? Um, but yeah, fantastic. Really a big, huge thank you to Alan and all the team at Western UK. West UK. Western UK. Western UK. <laughs> But yeah, go and check them out. All the Gumpf is in the, um, in below in the description and a link to their uh, website. And you can give them a call. Um, they are really friendly people and they will help you out to no end for custom exhausts. It doesn't have to be by the Spitfire, but you might just want to trail your exhaust down um, in a certain way so the, the engine looks a bit scale. Some people don't care. Um, you know, just have it hanging out the side, but I'm very about scale. Now you're probably saying to me, well, Chris, if you're about scale, then you would to put a three prop on there. I might put a three prop on there. Um, for now, I've got a, somewhere around here, I have got a 11, 11 by 7.5 master air screw that should make a lot of noise, <clears throat> which kind of looks really diddy on the plane. When you put it on the plane, though you can't see it much now, it's not a lot of air. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm just used to the uh, the prop from the Corsair, uh, the Corsair bin, which is still over here. I've not put it back on yet because I've only just got the stuff from JP. So that's the Corsair prop, and then I've got the Spitfire prop. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, I always thought that this would have something like that on it. What do I know? I'm the man with all the gear, but no idea. So well, I've had a couple of. Um, people saying to you Chris when are you going to get maidens out and all that sort of lovely stuff well it is a lovely day tomorrow Saturday yes 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 and I put the feelers out on our um, flying clubs um, uh, Facebook and said hey anybody want to get a buddy box and, uh, and and join me flying so I can get flying because I have to fly with someone at the moment I haven't got my certificate as you know at the moment I've had no response <laughs> What am I going to do? But So hopefully if we do get a flight, um, obviously it's only going to be probably the right and the big horn I'll probably take. Um, so um, yeah, let's just get me back into flying first. See if I'm if good enough for that A cert. So hold tight. This is Dad's RC Hangers, Chris Journey. 
Chris's journey, there you go, in the RC world, which is a fantastic hobby, it really is. Anyway, I'm waffling on again. <laughs> so, I'm sure you're going to get out flying this weekend, so when you do, be safe, but most of all, have fun. So, uh, till next week, thanks for stopping by now. See ya, bye-bye. <laughs>